we begin to embrace this Vedic mindset that at the, at the source of all reality, all we have is consciousness. Consciousness then takes on form and phenomenon to give us the experience of the world. Then as we begin to shift our mindset from the world is material to the world is basically consciousness, what we recognize is that there's a different skill set to fulfill our needs in the world. So when we believe that the world is material, we get our needs met by force and by effort. <clears throat> you know, that's what Isaac Newton said, that, that if you want to change the world, you have to apply a force to it. Force equals mass times acceleration. So the physical world we influence by forcing and effort. But when we recognize that the world is really a field of energy and information, you know, then we have to we have to awaken a new set of skills. You know, it's really a quantum set of skills. You know, the, you know, the great discoveries of quantum physics say that this, this, even though this looks solid, it's not solid. That's an illusion. It's just the way forces are interacting with each other to give you this illusion of materiality. You know, we pierce through the disguise of matter. We see that it's this vast dimension of energy and information. So in order to act in a world that is energy and information, we have to master the skill set of attention and intention. Attention and intention. And there's two basic principles in, in Vedanta. One is that whatever we put our attention on expands in our lives. Whatever we put our attention on becomes bigger in our lives. Okay. So that means we want to be very conscious about what are we putting our attention on. You know? So if you're putting your attention on your ex-spouse, that will continue to be expansive in your life. You know? If you put your attention on something that you're fearing, that will expand in your life. That's why you know, the great conscious beings say, do not use the word not. Because when you're saying, I'm not going to, you know, if you're trying to lose weight, you say, I'm not going to eat that. At a deep level, your mind doesn't know the difference between not and not not. So by constantly focusing on not eating, you're really focusing on eating, so you're always going to be eating. So you want to be very clear on what you're putting your attention on because it will grow in your life. If you put your attention on that relationship, that relationship will grow in your life. If you put your attention on your business, your business will grow in your life. If you put your attention on your health, your health will grow in your life. If you put your attention on your illness, your illness will grow in your life. So our attention is like fertilizer to whatever the object of the attention is. So we want to use our attention consciously. It's a force. It's actually, there, you know, on some levels, there's a battle for our attention. And, and the masters of attention know how to trap your attention on those things that they want you to keep it on, not what necessarily is in your best interest. Right? So a good advertiser traps your attention. And while it has your attention, then it introduces the intention, which is what it wants from you as a result of now having imprisoned your attention. Right? You know, great magicians, they know how to get your attention over here so they're not, you're not seeing that they're pulling a rabbit out of the hat over here. Right? And so there, in many ways, if we're, you know, if we're going to change the world, we have to be very conscious and quite masterful in what are we going to put our attention on so that we have the world putting the attention on those things which we think are valuable, which is helping the ecology, taking care of the people who can't feed themselves, educating our children, finding peaceful resolutions to conflicts. So it's very important that we recognize that attention is a force. And we 
become masters of where do we want to put our attention because whatever we put our attention on expands. And then the second principle is that our intentions, our intentions have organizing power. That, in fact, it said our intentions have infinite organizing power. That just the intention, when we get clear on the intention, the universe orchestrates around it to manifest that intention. I mean, as simple as everybody raise their hand right now, quick. Okay. So everybody raise your hand, put it down. Now, you had this subtle intention to raise your hand, right? Like, it was pretty easy. But the number of things that were orchestrated around that intention are unfathomable. You know, you had that intention, and somehow that triggered, if you raised your right hand, a series of fluctuations across cell membranes in your, in your um, motor cortex, across these things called BET cells, and, as a re and even before that occurred, there was all sorts of shifts in, in the receptors so that little fluctuations of calcium and sodium were flowing into that nerve cell. As a result of that simple intention to raise your hand, electrical impulses are flowing down from that nerve cell to your spinal cord. They're forming a synapse. They're releasing acetylcholine, floats across the cellular membrane, stimulates another nerve cell in the spinal cord, causing the flow of electricity down this arm. More electrochemicals or neurochemicals are being released. It's causing the muscles to contract, actin and myosin to shift past each other, calcium to flow into the cells. Your liver is re breaking down glycogen and releasing sugar. Other cells are going down into your, into your, into your, uh, your core muscles to stabilize you. Other messages are going to the muscles that are opposite the muscles you want to lose, use so that it relaxes. I mean, just. You know, your vestibular organ in your brain is orchestrating so that you don't fall over when you raise your hand. You know, it's just like an unbelievable number of events were orchestrated with the simple thing as, I want to raise my hand up. You know, thank God we don't have to think about those things. It would be <laughs> impossible to do anything. So, you know, I, I actually remember Deepak and I were having this discussion when one of my kids started crawling, you know, why did, why did she start crawling? Because there was some toy that was a little bit out of her reach. So just the intention, I want to be able to reach that toy, orchestrated so many things to get her body to move in order to reach that toy. Okay. So our intentions are so powerful.